Welcome to today's lesson. In our previous lesson, we talked about cells. So, so one of the structures is known as the cell membrane. It's found in both plants and that of animals. So the cell membrane serves as semi-permeable membrane. That is, it permits certain substances to pass through whilst restraining others so that the cell can continue to live. People travel from part of the world to another to do businesses or for other purposes. And because where they are going too far from their destination, they need means of transport either by the air, by the land, or by sea. In the same vein, living organisms, plants, animals, also need a kind of system, transport system, that will enable them to function or to survive. When you take unicellular organism, example, amoeba, paramecium, their entire body is surrounded with their immediate environment. And because of that, they do not need complicated transport system because everything that they need gets into their system without any problem. But when you consider multicellular organisms, that is organisms with plenty of cells, can you give an example? Goats, man, sheep, lizard, all these are made of plenty of cells. And because of that, some of the cells are far away from the other. And therefore, they need, they need a kind of system that to coordinate, connect, link them together so that all the things that they need can be transported from one part of their body to another. So but the process by which substances are transported from a part of the body to another in living organisms is known as the transport system. Now, what are some of the things that are transported from parts of the body to another? The body needs vitamins, it needs glucose, it needs amino acids, it needs water and the like. All these are in the form of solution. So we have a system where these will be conveyed, carried from parts of the body to another. Apart from these things, we have hormones, enzymes. What are hormones? Hormones are chemical substances that speed up the rate of chemical reactions in the body. Example, we have one known as the prolactin, responsible for production of breast milk. The emergency hormone, when you hear the word snake, you become so scared. Why? It's the emergency hormone that is secreted into your body for it becomes scared so that you can easily run away for your life. All these are found in the parts of your body and they have to be carried, transported into the bloodstream to their specific uh, targets or organs. Apart from this, if you remember under uh, excretion, so some of the things that I've mentioned, the amino acids, glucose, and the like, some of them, after the body has to use them, the excess form, if you allow them to remain in the body, could poison the system as a result, one may die from that. So there should be a way of getting rid of them from the system, the process known as the excretion. So what are examples of this? Number one, we have the sweat. We have the jury, which is formed by the kidneys. We have the bar pigment produced by the, the liver and the like. All these are waste metabolic substances. If you're allowed to stay in your body, could poison the system. And they have it transported from their body to be excreted as a waste product. That is why we need the transport systems in our bodies. Now, as I said earlier on, uh, people traveled by three main ways. In the same vein, when it comes to the living organisms, we have three main ways by which substances move into the cells and also come out from the cells. And these processes, methods, ways are one, diffusion, two, osmosis, then three is active active transport. So these are the processes 
by which substances, amino acids, glucose, and the like can get into the system and also come out from the system. Today, we are going to deal with only the diffusion. Then in our subsequent videos, we we'll talk about the rest. So, we are concentrating on diffusion today. Now, what is diffusion? Sometimes, when you are at your classroom, without going to your, uh, the student's canteen, you can realize that, or you could guess, that today we are going to take gobe, rice and stew. Why? The aroma of the food, the scent, has been transported from the kitchen to your classroom. That's the molecules of it have been transferred from, your, the, from the kitchen to the classroom. Apart from that, when somebody comes to a church, especially the ladies, then he has sprayed herself with highly scented perfume. When he was doing it, you are not there. But as soon as he enters into the church premises, you could smell that highly scented perfume on the lady. It is a kind of what? Diffusion. Now, you can observe me. This is a body spray. I've done the spraying here. But as time goes on, the particles of it will move gradually from here to the other end of the room. It is also a diffusion. So when we talk about diffusion, what is it at all? Diffusion could be defined as the movement of molecules or particles from a region of higher concentration of the particles to a region of lower concentration of the particles until all the particles are evenly distributed. I'll take it again. I said diffusion is defined as the movement of molecules or particles from a region of high concentration of the molecules or particles to a region of lower concentration of that molecules or particles until all the particles are evenly distributed. That is known as the diffusion. In examination, if you are able to coat everything better thing, you get two marks. Now, let me tell the definition, the key words, and later and then we discuss. Number one, I said movement of particles. What are the particles or the molecules? Let's use the spray as an example. The things, the materials that they use in preparation or production of the spray are known as the particles. You take that of the granule soup. If it's the soup, as I've mentioned, the granules, the, 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 the fish, the ingredients that they use, they move from the kitchen to your classroom. Then the other one, I said, from region of higher concentration, so what is the higher concentration? Where the spraying, where the spraying, where I did the spraying, where the spraying is being done, this on the table. Where the spraying, I've put the spraying, the drops of the spraying on the table, is known as the higher concentration because here we have a lot of the particles or the molecules of the perfume being concentrated on the table. That is why it's known as the higher concentrated region. Then where the particles were not spread, but they are moving gradually to the other end of the class. It's also known as the lower concentration. Then another key word, I said, until all the particles are evenly distributed. The spraying has been done here, but as time goes, so he said, the particles or the molecules, better still, the scent, could be felt in the whole class or smelled in the whole room. Meaning that if we're not even here, that the, I was doing the spraying, and as soon as you enter the room, you could ask, ah, who has sprayed the room? Who has sprayed the room? It's because of what the molecules have moved from here to cover entire room. And that is known as diffusion. Movement of particles from a region of higher concentration 
to a region of lower concentration until all the particles are evenly distributed. That is known as diffusion. Now let's go on. In what media can diffusion take place? Diffusion can occur occurs in liquids and that of gases. These are the two main media by which diffusion can occur in them. So let's continue. How can diffusion occur in air or gas? We've been doing it at home. How do you control mosquitoes in your rooms? You close all your windows and the doors. Then you put two or three drops of the spray. I don't want to mention any one of them, but you know them. Mention them at your homes. You put them just at the corner of the room. Then you leave. Ten minutes or five minutes, you can observe. See that the molecules or the particles of that spray that you use have covered the whole room. Now, why do you have to close all the windows and the doors? You close the windows and the doors so that the the, the particles, the molecules of the spray could be concentrated in the room so that the mosquitoes will what, be suffocated and then die. If you open the windows, the particle can easily what, escape into the atmosphere and that you cannot achieve your aim. That is for the, um, the gas. Then what about the liquids? With the liquids, we need water. So let me fetch my water. Then I have potassium permanganate. Even before that, in our homes, when one is washing or when you are washing, then you want to brighten your white uh, clothing. What do you do? You add what? Blue. The blue, how do you do it? Sometimes you can just rinse in between what your palms, then uh, rub in between your palms and then rinse it in what? In the water. It's a kind of what? Diffusion. I have potassium permanganate here. Yeah. Let's look at it. Potassium permanganate here. Yeah. So I want to take a grain of it. Then pour it into the, it's the powdery form. Pour it into the, the liquid. That is the water. So carefully observe what I'm doing. Have you seen that the particles of the potassium permanganate is moving? Please, is the potassium, that is a solute, a solute, that is what? Moving, but not the water. It is the crystals of the potassium permanganate that is moving, but not the water. Now you can see that the particles are moving gradually. So this shows that diffusion can take place in liquid. We perform this experiment again in the, alongside the lesson. So today we talk about diffusion. So diffusion is the process or is defined as the movement of molecules. It defined as the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until all the particles are evenly distributed, as we just demonstrated. Now, I want you to take the following questions. They are wasi questions. Question number one. Question number one. What do you understand by the term diffusion? What do you understand by the term diffusion? SSE 1995, question 1A. SSE 1995, question 1A. So it's very, very important for you to know the definition of diffusion. Next question. The same question was repeated. I think 20, uh, 2014. Wasi 2014. 
Question 5A. Explain the term diffusion. Explain the term diffusion. State two differences between diffusion and osmosis, but we haven't tackled osmosis. But I just want you to know that questions are asked on this uh, topic. Let's move on to the objective questions. The objective questions can also be found in the new approaches series, chapter, chapter 14. Chapter 14. Let me read out some of the questions. What's the questions on this topic? Which of the following processes in living organisms take place by diffusion? I'll take it again. Which of the following processes in living organisms take place by diffusion? Then you have alternative answers. I, removal of waste products from the plants and animals. I, I, absorption of mineral salt by plants from soil through root hair cells. I, 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 digested food, mineral salts and vitamins get into the bloodstream from the ileum of, the, of a mammal. I, V, absorption of water in the large intestines of a mammal. So we have the answers A, I and I, I only. B, I, I, I and I, V only. C, I, I, I and I, I only. D, I, 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 I and I, V only. So these are the alternatives we should choose from. Then another question. Diffusion in mammals is demonstrated in the A. Diffusion in mammals is demonstrated in the A. Movement of urine from the kidney into the urinary bladder. That is A. B. Movement of saliva from the salivary glands into the vocal cavity. C. Absorption of salt by the source of the body. D. Gaseous exchange in the alveolar. This question came at Wasi, June 2012, question number 22. So these are some of the questions on this topic. I want you to try your hands on these questions so that in your subsequent lesson or lecture, we give answers to them. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Hoping to see you in our next lecture and that will be the continuation of diffusion thank you